Hello everyone and welcome back to Fast CPAs and Consultants. Here we are again with our CPA Fulton Abraham Sanchez. Hi Fulton, welcome back. Hi Moni. This is a video Thank series you. called Tax Talk, where we are going to talk about the different tax strategies that you must follow according to your situation. And of course, we will answer all the questions we have been received uh, through our social networks, which you will find as well in the description of this video, so you can look at below. And as you may remember, our first, first video was about the US expat taxes, and it was divided into two parts. So now we are going to start with the second part. So Fulton, are you ready for the second round? Yes. Okay, so here we go. The first question for this part. Will expats get third stimulus check? Yes, they will. Um, as I said before, the easiest way to get a, a, an, a, a stimulus check in tax season is to file an income tax at least paying one dollar a tax. That's, that would be the easiest way there. You can, you can put your bank account or you can put an address here in the U.S. and then you will receive, either you will receive the check to the address in the U.S. I would recommend to an address in the U.S. and then having someone to deposit the check in the bank account here in the U.S. or you put the, the, the account number and the account routing in the tax return that you file and you will receive the money directly into the account. As an option, you can also wait. Um, I don't know if the IRS is going to open the same, the same link that they, they open for the first stimulus when they allow uh, everyone to update their, uh, their information to receive the stimulus check. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, so we received a question concerning children. So we have, can you a citizen living abroad claim child tax credit? No, no, because the requirement is that you, that you live in the US at least six months. And I've seen, I've seen returns from people that other accountants, they have, they live in the outside of the U.S. And even though they live in the side of the U.S., the accountant here in the U.S. or outside of the U.S. Uh, filing the return, they claim saying, yes, we have lived six months or more in the U.S. for the entire year with a U.S. address. And they get the earning income credit, the child tax credit, and, the, and all those credits. Problem that that is fraud. Hmm. It's fraud to claim earning income credit, child tax credit, child, uh, if you live outside of the U.S. You cannot claim those because those claims are designed for U.S. citizens living in the U.S. Okay, okay, so no way. So no. then we have, how long do you have to be out of the country to not pay tax? Uh, there is no statute of limitations. You have, the only way for you not to pay taxes in the U.S. is that you renounce your citizenship. Oh, That's the only okay. way. Or There's if no... you are with payroll and you receive less than one. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. of course, yeah. If you don't, if always keep your, your head below $110,000, but you have to work as an employee. That mm. is... Critical. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Then, how do I file my U.S. taxes from abroad? There, there are sites, uh, Tax Act. There are also TurboTax that they will help you. The problem is that those websites are designed for U.S. citizens living in the U.S. Um, Living outside of the U.S. will be a little more complicated. For example, if you have a company, if you have a, if you work, uh, if you have to claim the foreign income, earning income exclusion, if you have to claim, if you have to calculate the the foreign earning, the foreign uh, income tax uh, credit as well, it will be a little difficult to file your taxes in those sites. the The other option is to hire a experienced professional, either a CPA, a tax attorney, or a, an enrolled agent with experience in the area 
Um, I've seen cases, for example, clients who come to us and the, the, the previous accountant didn't file the tax return and they, they keep receiving uh, letters. They didn't claim an exclusion. They didn't claim uh, something that will have benefit them. So to avoid that, if you don't, if you don't want to, if you want peace of mind, then better to hire a, a professional, but make sure that there is a CPA, experienced CPA and an expert, and a, a, an attorney experienced in taxation for expert and, or an enrolled agent that is experienced with uh, expert taxation. Yes, of course. And I imagine also like a CPA that it's, it's always up, updated with all the changes that IRS make, I, I imagine. Yes, yeah, that's, that's, um, that's also, we, we dedicate every week a number of hours to be aware of um, most of the changes for, for, every single, for every single audience that we, that we serve. One of them is expats and there is a, in the expat section, there is only the expat section, it's also the international section because expat open companies in the US, outside of the US and that, it's an, that is an additional layer of reporting when you have a company that you need to, it, 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 will, it is like a second tax return on top of the personal return that you have to file. So even though the, the US, ex, the, the CPA, the attorney, uh, the role agent could be versed in, pres, in, in, in filing personal US expat, there is a second layer of taxation for when there is businesses in the foreign country and there is a third layer when there is trust that is less familiar because few people have trust. Well, I've seen people have trust in, in Latin America in a specific legislation that favor this kind of, of a structure of, uh, to protect uh, for asset protection or in the Caribbean for, for asset protection as well. Where uh, if things are not correctly reported then the IRS uh, one year and the next one are not correctly reported, the IRS is going to either send you a letter or or request more information. So better to cover all your bases and leave this to a professional. Exactly. Especially if you have company, for example, you are, you are a reputed CEO or president in a company there, or you own a large business and you are, and you have to file personal income tax. You have to file a, a, a tax in the foreign country for the company. And then you also have companies by your own. And then you have a trust, which is the typical the typical, uh, the typical uh, structure that we've seen with owners, uh, U.S. citizens who own businesses, medium-sized, large businesses in, 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 in foreign countries. Okay, okay, I see. So, yes, it's a lot of information and we have to be really careful with it. Okay, so another question is, what tax form does a U.S. citizen living abroad file? They file... Uh, everyone files 1040. That is like the face of the tax return. It's the first page of the tax return. US expat, for example, they file 2555 form. That is the foreign earned income exclusion when they work for a company that pays taxes to the Social Security Administration in the foreign country. They file to claim that they file, they file 2555. That is the foreign earned income exclusion. Uh, then they can they can they can file the claimant of the hundred and ten thousand dollars, and but for example, if the if the foreign the expat has has spent any number of of days in the U.S. and the U and the and the U.S. expat is a is a resident of the other country. And the, the, he pays taxes there. He has a resident there. His kids go to a school, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He has roots there. Um, the the foreign American exclusion is prorated to the number of days that was stayed in that country. So if you spend five, ten, twenty, thirty days, and you will not get the hundred and ten thousand dollars in full. It will be prorated to the number of days that you didn't spend in the country because it's hundred and ten thousand dollars is equivalent to three hundred and sixty-five days in the country and the foreign country. If you spend less than three hundred and sixty-five days, 
your foreign earned income exclusion will be reduced. That's something that you need to consider. Um, there are two kinds of there are two kinds of, of, of being considered an expert. There is the present test and the bona fide test. The present test is that you stayed in the, in that country for for 330 days or over. The bona fide bona fide test, US, even though you can spend over 30 days outside of the uh, resident country in the foreign in the foreign resident country, but you have to have roots. What I say, you have to have roots, meaning you pay taxes, you go to church there or to the synagogue or to the mosque, you, or to temple. You have your kids there. You have your you, your house is there, you have a mortgage there, you have proof, you have bank statements there, that will, that, that will not prevent you from claiming that, claiming that you're a US expat and, and benefit, benefiting you from the $110,000. But it will be reduced by the number of days that you stayed out of that country, either in the US or any other country. And whenever we file taxes, the IRS requires to uh, the requires the, the the expert to mention with dates, with the specific dates, the number that uh, that you spend here in the U.S. Uh, specifically. Okay, okay. And related to this question, I also saw a question asking about the form eleven eleven sixteen. To the eleven. Oh, before that, I forget. There is and there is also remember uh, that, that form twenty five fifty five. There is also the F bar, meaning that you need to file to the uh, to the U S Treasury your bank accounts holdings over ten thousand dollars. That is called that is called F bar F B A R F bar, and this is also this is where the U S Treasury is FinCEN one hundred fourteen. That is a form that you file with the U S Treasury. It's not with the IRS. It's the U S Treasury. In addition to that, if you have a company outside of the U.S. and you are 10% or more shareholder or partner, you need to file form 5471. That is for balance sheet and, in, and profit and loss of the foreign company. If you own a trust, you also need to file the, even if you are, even if you are a beneficiary, and you do not receive, you have to file and, and report that you are a citizen of the US and you are, you are beneficiary, beneficiary of the trust, even though you have not received anything. Then, then there is also FATCA. FATCA requires for expat to report any holding, any financial holding of $200,000 and over to the IRS, this that is to the IRS. For expat, it's two hundred dollars single, four hundred dollars married, uh, married filing joint. Here in the US, it's fifty thousand, fifty and over. We have to report to FATCA. So it's ten thousand F bar for expat and U and domestic US citizens, and it's for expat two hundred or four hundred for FATCA means that if you have $400,000, $200,000, $400,000 in liquid assets outside of the US, this could be this could be stocks, this could be banks, this could be any any liquid asset, any any financial asset that you have, this could be trading, this could be trading in foreign currency, anything that is assets, liquid assets or financial assets needs to be reported that to the IRS. Okay, okay, thank you. I hope it is clear for everybody. If not, you, rem you, can, you remember that you can always send, an, send us an email or write your comments or questions on below, below this video. So Fulton, uh, after all, all these uh, subjects and topics we have talked in video number one and this video, this second part, in your experience, what are the most common U.S. expats tax mistakes? The 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 main the main mis, the main concern or the say the first consideration is that uh, a belief that there is no obligation for reporting taxes. That is, 
the main, uh, let's say, the people are not aware of that reporting obligation. That is the first one. Second is that um, when they have several accounts in a bank, that they are small balances, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, and they do not, and, and they say, for example, they have one for five and another for eight, because they are not 10,000, they believe that they don't have to report. If you have one account for five and another account for eight, they make up 13, so you have to report the two of them. Okay. Or if you have one account for two, another for three, and another for five, then you have to report the three of them. That's one. The, the third one is that if I am a, an employee in a company and I signed, I don't have to report to the to the U.S. Treasury because I am just a signatory of the account. No, you have to report that you are a signature of the account because the bank is going to report you to the IRS, and the bank is not going to say he is just the the legal representative. Blah blah blah. No, they're going to say he is the he is the, sig the signature of the account. He's the sign the principal signature of the account. So he is the one owning the money, and the IRS is going to send you a letter. So it's better to I know that all this is tedious and FATCA, there is, in Europe, I know that there are lawsuits challenging FATCA before the European Union, and there is one introduced here in, the, in Washington that is not, has not happened yet. Um, the regulations to avoid all this, uh, all this uh, frauds that the big, big uh, big people or people who know this consciously trying to defraud the US government, uh, the law is so heavy that it's affecting to the to single to simple uh, US citizen, people who have just moved to another country because they want to spend less and have a better uh, perhaps breathe a better air, have a, a, a different life in nature. Um, form a community, help the country. And by the way, thank you very much to all of those experts who live in, in Latin America and other countries who are helping those communities, very uh, poor communities. And I know uh, people in, in Costa Rica, in Mexico, in Panama, in Colombia, in Ecuador, in Peru, in um, Argentina, and Brazil. I know that they are doing very good deeds for, for the for these countries and thank you very much for you for having for having the, for taking the challenge of going to a country that you don't know and and spending all this time there and and helping our communities but that is that is the reality so it is um it is uh, perhaps a little of of non uh, enough information from from our side professionals informing to the US expat that when they cross the border, they still have all these obligations um, that they are, they are not clear what they have to file. Um, they also, another concern is that they don't, they don't know that the IRS created a program exclusively for expats for getting into um, uh, account with the IRS when they have non-file uh, previous years because they have no idea. So there is, there is also lack of information because I, uh, there is a lot of information about you have to file this and file that, but, but there is a program designed exclusively for expats when they only need to file three years of tax return, regardless of the number of years that you have, that you have not filed, three years of tax return, pay any tax, uh, pay taxes if any, Five, six years of FBAR, you don't have to pay taxes for FBAR, it's just an information return. And with that, you're clear. So this is why we're, we are giving this information to experts so they know that there, is, there are ways to come into account with the IRS. Okay. Thank you very much, Fulton, really. I think all this information will really, really like contribute to the expat community abroad. So we are just about to finish this video. So like to conclude, uh, um, yes, what are the tax obligations for US expats? For US expats, the tax obligation 
are basically four. The, if you are if you earn over one hundred and ten thousand dollars, you have to pay taxes in the U.S. for the amount, for the portion over one hundred and ten thousand dollars, but you can claim a credit for the taxes that you paid in the U.S. Remember, you cannot claim the full amount of taxes that you paid in the foreign country um, because the IRS has, is already giving you $110,000 as a break. So you can only claim a portion of the taxes that you pay in the foreign country. That is, that is the first obligation. Uh, the second one is if you are self-employed. For example, if you are self-employed and you are a US citizen and you are paying taxes in the foreign country, the, there is what is called equalization agreements. If, uh, for example, Spain and uh, US signed an equalization agreement. And if the US citizen doesn't want to pay social security taxes in the foreign country because he, prefer, he or she prefers paying taxes in the US to claim social security benefits, then the US, the US citizen can get a, an exemption from the foreign social security administration, from the foreign tax uh, department, and, non, non, and that will allow him or her not pay, to not pay taxes in the foreign country's social security. So he, will, he or she will pay taxes only here in the US. That's one thing um, that, I, that US expats this is the information that is not is lost in the cyberspace. There is no this kind of information about the the ways how you can benefit with these all these treaties. Many countries don't have these treaties. For example, uh, you, European countries they enjoy all these France, uh, Spain, but Latin America a little less. Latin America mostly is only double taxation taxes. So there is no equalization where. Where you, where one U.S. citizen, uh, where the U.S. citizen doesn't pay taxes in the foreign country because the, he's paying in the here in the U.S. But that only works for those U.S. citizens who are not working as employees, because if you work as an employee, you have no option. You have to pay taxes in that foreign country. The problem is with the self-employed, because self-employed they pay taxes in the foreign country to the social security and they should pay taxes here to the social security in the US. So to avoid this double taxation for self-employed people, for self-employed US expats, there is a way to do, to request from the foreign administration, foreign tax administration, an exemption. And with that exemption, not paying taxes in the foreign in the foreign country because he is paying taxes here in the U.S. You cannot avoid paying taxes in the U.S. because you are a U.S. citizen. So, you are supposed to claim you are supposed to claim a social security benefits when you retire because you are a U.S. citizen. The next one is the reporting of the bank accounts. You have to report the bank accounts to the to the to the U.S. Treasury. If you also have a foreign a foreign business, you have to report that to this to the U, to the IRS if you own over ten percent of that business. And finally, if you have a trust, you also need to report that in your personal income tax return. Otherwise, it's going to be penalized with ten thousand dollars. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much again, Fulton. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here. We know it is an ocean of information, but don't worry. Yeah. For that reason, we are here. And remember that we are going to make more videos where we talk about the different tactics strategies that you must follow according to your situation. And of course, we will answer all the questions we have received through our social networks and also the ones you may leave in the comments of this video. So it is your chance. You can also follow us on social networks and of course you are more than welcome to subscribe to our channel so you can be notified when we publish a new video about taxes and you already know that it is so important to be aware of taxes so you also have our contact details in the description of this video like our email address and of course instagram facebook in case you want to ask us something more specific and that's it. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Fulton, for this information, which is really Pleasure. valuable. So see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.